Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew, and welcome to my SBA Small Bust Adjustment Tutorial. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to be discussing with you how you actually go about doing a small bust adjustment with a pattern that has a single dart on the side seam. We're also going to be looking at how to work out whether you need to do an SBA and how much you need to reduce the pattern by. By doing a small bust adjustment, we're going to be reducing the pattern right at the center point of the bust, in length and also in width, so that it fits your bust better. Now, before we begin, I would like you to go and watch my What is SBA tutorial, because in that tutorial, I discuss in greater detail why you may need to do an SBA. We talk about cup sizes, and I'm not talking about bra cup sizes here. I show you how to measure your high bust and your full bust. You're going to need both of those measurements to continue. And we discuss the fitting issues that you might have in a garment if you may need to do an SBA. Now, the majority of pattern companies draft patterns for a B cup. A B cup is a difference of two inches or five centimeters between the high bust measurement and the full bust measurement. You're going to need to measure your high bust and your full bust and find out the difference between the two. Cup size is increased by one inch or 2.5 centimeters. So an A cup is a difference of one inch, 2.5 centimeters. A B cup is a difference of two inches, five centimeters. A C cup is three inches, 7.5 centimeters. And a D cup is four inches or 10 centimeters. Now the majority of pattern companies draft for a B cup, but you can find some independent pattern companies draft for a C cup. And again, you might find an independent pattern company that's got something different. You can purchase patterns that have different cup sizes, so that can also be useful. But you may need to do an SBA if your cup size is different to the pattern's cup size that you're working with. So where do you start? Well, you may have already made a garment, and the majority of the garment might fit you perfectly, but the bust area is just too big. Perhaps it's bagging in the bust, it looks like it needs to be filled out with a larger cup size. In that case, then you're going to be able to continue working with the same pattern size. You just need to do an SBA to reduce the volume of the cup size. Obviously, the first step is to work out what cup size that pattern was drafted for and to work out what cup size you are. For example, that pattern might be a standard B cup, a two inch or five centimeter difference between the high bust and the full bust. If you are an A cup, so you have a one inch difference, 2.5 centimeters between the high bust and the full bust, then you're going to need to remove one inch, the difference between an A cup and a B cup, 2.5 centimeters from the pattern in the form of an SBA, a small bust adjustment. So one inch, 2.5 centimeters is the total amount that you're going to need to remove. When we're working with the pattern, we will majority of the time be working on half of the pattern. That means that we can remove half of the amount you need. So that's half an inch or 1.25 centimeters. Now what happens if you haven't made up the garment yet? You know that you have a small cup size and you're going to need to make an SBA. And you want to sort of get as close as possible to the right fit before you make up your sample garment. So let's look at an example. Let's say that you've taken your high bust measurement and the measurement that you got was 31 inches. Now, you need to find out the pattern company that you're working with, what cup size their patterns are drafted for. So say you're working with an independent pattern company and they draft for a C cup. That means that on top of that high bust measurement, you're going to need to add three inches, 7.5 centimeters. So 31 plus three is 34 inches. Now that is the size of the pattern that you're going to want to choose. And this should mean that the pattern is going to fit you through the rest of the garment at the top, the shoulders, the chest, the armhole. Obviously, I can't promise that it's going to fit you because you may be broader in the shoulders than the pattern company. And this is where it is a little bit of trial and error and will depend on the pattern company that you're working with. So you've chosen the pattern size of a 34 inch bust. The next step is that you're going to need to compare that pattern size, a 34 inch bust, with your full bust measurement. And your full bust measurement was 32 inches. Therefore, you have a difference of two inches which is five centimeters. So you're going to need to do a small bust adjustment of two inches, five centimeters. 
If you divide that on one half of the pattern, that's going to be one inch, 2.5 centimeters. And this completely makes sense because you're working here with a pattern that is a C cup. But the difference between your high bust and your full bust is only one inch, 2.5 centimeters, which is an A cup. So by removing the two inches or five centimeters, you are moving the pattern back to a B cup, then back to an A cup. And I generally find that this is the best starting point. As I said, it does depend on other parts of your figure, how broad you are at the top, what your shoulder size is, but it's a good starting point to get you to work with a small bust adjustment and to see what works for you. I always recommend making a calico toile sample garment once you've made the SBA, because you're going to want to check whether what you did was the right thing, whether the size that you chose was right for you. Just a little reminder, whenever you take any of these measurements, please do wear a bra that you're planning on wearing with your final garment, because that can make a difference to them. So now that we know what pattern to choose if you need to do an SBA, and how much to remove in your SBA, we're going to get started. I'm working with a pattern, as I said, that has a single dart on the side seam. If you've got a pattern like that that you can work with, that's great. If not, why don't you just draw out the pattern and then follow along? Then you could keep this pattern to one side, and if you end up with a pattern like this in the future that you need to do an SBA on, you'll have an example to follow. Now you're going to want to begin by finding the bust apex on the pattern. Now you may have one that's been marked on there already, but you may not. You may need to find the bust apex for the pattern that you're working with. And I have a tutorial that shows you how to get as close to this as possible. Now when you're doing a small bust adjustment, it's generally best to work with the bust apex that already exists on the pattern. That's because when we do a small bust adjustment, the bust apex will be moving slightly. And it allows you to do the small bust adjustment and then to position your individual bust apex onto the pattern. Obviously, if your bust apex is extremely different to the bust apex on the pattern, then you may need to position your bust apex on the pattern first so that you're doing the small bust adjustment in the correct position. However, you will then need to check the position of the bust apex because, as I said, it will move. So, once you have your bust apex positioned on the pattern, we're going to start by drawing some lines. Now, the first line that we're going to want to draw is from the bust apex straight down to the waist or to the bottom of the garment. This line needs to be parallel to your grain line. And I'm using the lines on the ruler to make sure that I'm completely parallel to the grain line. Now I've gone ahead and drawn mine in a green sharpie so it is clear for you to see. Obviously throughout this tutorial you're going to be working with pencil. Now the next line that you need to draw is from the bust apex up to the armhole. And the position of this line needs to be approximately one third of the armhole. If you divide your armhole into three, it needs to be one third from the underarm or side seam. And mine is approximately at the position of the front notch. So I'm going to again draw a line from the bust apex to that notch, just like so. Now the other thing that we need to do at this armhole area is because the pattern that I'm working with includes a seam allowance, I need to actually mark my seam allowance on. And this will become clearer in a second when we start cutting along these lines. The pattern that I'm working with has got 5 eighths, 1.5 centimetres. Yours might be different. The key is that if you have a seam allowance on the pattern, you need to measure in from the edge here, just around where this line is, and draw it on. If your pattern doesn't have a seam allowance, then you don't need to worry about this. Now the final line that we're going to draw is going to be from the center of the dart through the dart point to the bust apex. Now you can find the center of the dart by simply measuring between the two dart legs. Or if your dart has been trued in a certain direction, you will find that you've got a point at the side seam here, and that should be the center of the dart and should be in line with the point of the dart and the bust apex. And I'm going to draw another line in there. The next step is that we need to cut the pattern. Now we're going to cut the pattern from the waist or the bottom of your pattern piece up to the bust apex, through the bust apex, and up towards the armhole. Now, because this pattern has got a seam allowance on it, 
we need to cut to the seam allowance and no further. So let's do that one first. We're going to cut up this line. to the bust apex, then we're going to continue cutting and we're going to stop cutting at that stitching line there. Now the reason we need to do this will become clearer when we start actually moving the pattern, but if you have got seam allowances there, we do not want to amend the stitching line of the pattern here. So we're going to cut in from the edge of the pattern towards the stitching line, but we want to leave a tiny bit of paper still attached there. So approximately an eighth, a sixteenth of an inch, sort of two millimeters of paper still attached at that stitching line. If your pattern doesn't have a stitching line, then by all means, you can cut all the way from the bust apex up to the edge of the armhole and you would leave a little hinge of paper there. Now the final line that we need to cut is from the side seam of the dart up to the bust apex but not through the bust apex. So again a tiny little hinge of paper on this piece here please. Okay, so hopefully you can see that I've cut from the waist up to the bust apex and up to the stitching line. Now as I tilt this piece, you can see that the paper is pivoting on the stitching line. That is the reason why we had to cut to the stitching line and then back in from the edge of the paper to the stitching line again, because we do not want to amend the size of the armhole. As I said, if your pattern that you're working with has no seam allowances, then by all means cut to the edge of the piece of paper, and again, you won't be affecting the size of the armhole. And the dart here has also been cut, so I can spread the pattern piece, which is what you'd be doing if you've watched my full bust adjustment tutorial, but we're going to be reducing the size of the pattern piece. So we are going to be doing the opposite and actually overlapping the pieces of paper. Okay. So, the next step is to decide on how much of a small bust adjustment you were doing. So let's look back at our original example. If you remember, we needed a SBA of two inches or five centimeters. Now we're working on half of the pattern here, so we're going to divide two inches or five centimeters in half, which gives us one inch or 2.5 centimeters. We are going to reduce the pattern by one inch or 2.5 centimeters here. If you remember, if you wish to reduce the pattern by one cup size, the difference between cup sizes is one inch, 2.5 centimeters total. So again, you would half that. So you're gonna be removing half an inch, 1.25 centimeters on each side per cup size that you wish to reduce the pattern by. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to draw another line from the line that goes from the bust apex down to the waist or the hem of the pattern. We're going to reduce this pattern by one inch, 2.5 centimeters. So we're going to draw this line closer towards the center front edge. And you want to make sure that the line is parallel to the grain line, which the original line should be. And you can just draw a line a little bit higher than this one is, just like so. Now what we're going to be doing now is the cut that you made from the base of the pattern up to the bust apex. If I slide that apart slightly, so I'm using the pivot at the armhole here, this line needs to be positioned onto our new line, one inch in, and we need to make sure that it's straight and again completely parallel to the grain line. In order for us to achieve that, if I start sliding and pivoting at the armhole there on my stitching line, I can't get this line to sit parallel with the new line that I've drawn, one inch, 2.5 centimeters in. The only way I can do that is by reducing the dart volume. So the line that you cut up through the darts, you're also going to open and allow the paper to overlap. That will then allow you to bring these lines one on top of each other, just like so. And that is pretty much an SBA. 
Now, before we go any further here, I'm just gonna open this back out, because what you'll notice here is that the side has become much shorter than the front. So we're also going to need to raise the centre front. If you remember, we're reducing the width, but also the height over the bust to complete a small bust adjustment. So if I open that back out, I'm going to draw a horizontal line through this centre front panel. It doesn't really matter where you do it, you can do it anywhere as long as it is completely square to the grain line or the centre front edge. I'm going to do mine in line with the bust apex here towards the centre front because I like to show that you're reducing the volume right at that point. My line needs to be completely square to the grain line. I'll draw that in, in my green sharpie. Okay. So once again, let's lift up this piece and let's move it over, pivoting at the armhole. Allow the darts, these pieces, to slide one on top of each other. And then we can line that up just like so. And you can grab some sticky tape. Now I'm gonna pop a little bit of tape to hold it in along this cut here. And before I start taping down my line, I'm gonna cut across this other horizontal line that we just drew. Because, as I said, the side seam is shorter than the center front now. So we're gonna cut along here. Move that one out of the way so you don't cut through it. And then we're going to bring this center front panel up so that it matches along the center front edge and also along that bottom edge there. So you really need to be cautious that you're lining everything up properly, lots and lots of right angles here. You can use your ruler if you want to, so if you prefer, remove that piece completely. Use your ruler to continue your centre front edge down. And then, use your ruler to continue the side edge in position. And then you can slot this in place underneath everything. Just like so. And I'm gonna tape that all in position. The next step is to take a look at your dart and what has happened to the dart. My dart legs are actually one on top of each other, which means that I have completely eliminated the dart by completing this SBA. That might be the right thing for you. If you have an especially small cup, you may find that the garment will actually fit you better without a dart. You don't need a dart to create shaping over your small cup. However, I would always recommend that you do test this. Check that the amount you reduced from your pattern for your SBA is correct. Now in a second, I'm going to show you what you would do if you had a dart left, a small dart left, and how you would actually line this up with your bust apex. But for now, let's continue on with this pattern. The bust apex is less important when you don't have a dart that actually needs to point towards it. So this pattern, we're ready to move on to the next step, which is to consider whether the waist of the pattern is going to fit you. We have reduced the pattern at the waist by one inch, 2.5 centimeters, by doing our SBA. That might be right for you, and I always recommend that you do an SBA prior to actually grading your pattern along the side seam, because you might find that actually the waist of this will fit you better by reducing it by that one inch, 2.5 centimeters. However, you've got a decision to make here. Either that's going to work, or it's not going to work. And if that's the case, you're going to need to add some extra paper or fabric onto the side here. So grab a scrap of paper and we can pop that under here. You're going to want to make sure that the bottom edge is all nicely lined up. And we can tape that in place. Now, we reduced the pattern by one inch, 2.5 centimeters. You may find that you need to add on one inch, 2.5 centimeters, because the original pattern would have fitted you at the waist. You might find that actually you're only needing to add on half of that. It's up to you and obviously depends on your measurements. We will measure from the side seam out the amount that you want to add on. I'm adding back on one inch, 2.5 centimeters. Then we're gonna grab a French curve. And what you want to do here is to blend this back in without adding too much to the bust area. 
it depends on how much you're add, having to add at the side seam for your waist. It can be tricky, but I would end up using the French curve and try and get a nice, flattering, soft shape that's going to increase the pattern here. Ignore this little flap. I'm actually going to cut him off because that's from the truing of the dart. When the dart existed, it doesn't exist anymore. So let's take a shape, something like this, I think something like that. Let me grab the red pen and I will draw that in for you to see. So we are adding a slight curve onto that side seam there and trying to reduce the amount we're adding back in obviously at the bust area because we wanted to remove the fabric there but we need the fabric to be back at the waist which is why we've had to add it back on. Obviously this depends on your individual situation and your individual cup size versus your waist size. But that is what you would do if you needed to add back on the amount that you removed at the waist. So now let's take a look at an SBA when you have a dart that still exists and how you will need to draw the dart legs in and find your individual bust apex. Now I've made another sample here to show you what you would do if you still have a dart remaining. Now I have done an SBA reducing the pattern by half an inch 1.25 centimeters and you can see if I pull that apart that my dart still exists I've probably got about a two centimeter three quarters of an inch dart left obviously the dart size has been reduced because the cup size has been reduced but the dart does still exist so what do you do now now, the bust apex has also been moved throughout this process. It's become higher and closer to the centre front. So that may or may not be in the right place for you. What you're going to need to do is either measure your bust apex and plot that onto the pattern. You can watch my tutorial that shows you how to do that. I then have a tutorial that shows you how to either just redraw the dart legs to the new bust apex or your bust apex, or if you need to make a big change, to move the darts up and down. Now I would actually recommend that you're, you're better off making a sample garment of this bodice first, even if you just make it down to the waist area. And trial it, check that the amount that you've reduced in the SBA is correct for you. You could also then compare the bust apex of the pattern, if you mark that onto your sample garment, with your bust apex. You could compare the difference, plot your new bust apex onto the pattern, and then reposition the dart. As a starting point, I would just reconnect the original dart legs from the base to where they now join, and you can trial this. However, the dart might not be in the right place for your bust apex, so do remember to check that. You're going to want to, before you finish, true the dart. I'll pop a tutorial that shows you how to do that. And you're going to want to consider, just like I showed you with the other pattern, whether you want to add the extra amount you've reduced at the waist back onto the side seam. So consider those issues, true your dart and true your side seam to check that it's going to join up with the back. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you now feel more confident when it comes to making a small bust adjustment, especially if this is your first time doing an SBA. If you have any questions at all, please do get in touch and I'll happily answer them. Once again, thanks for being here and I wish you all the best with your sewing and pattern drafting. Thanks for watching and see you soon.